Hey folks, how's everybody doing? Welcome to our next exit. As you can see, we're still up on the roof and we're uh, getting those panels mounted down. The biggest thing, this is kind of a scary part, but a boring part. Uh, you got to figure out how you're going to attach it. And these are big panels and they weigh like 25 pounds. We got to make sure they're up there solid. So we debated on the whale nuts, on the double-sided, that IBM double-sided tape. And uh, we ended up, as we talked about in the last video, we got some two inch screws. We're screwing down to a metal channel that runs across the top of the coach. They were 16 inches. And for the most part, that works great. Especially when you can hear that noise. That's the noise I'm talking about. But occasionally, I think three different times, we hit an air pocket. That is not a good feeling. So the way our frame is set up, if I skip every other one of those beams, that puts them about 32 inches apart. And the instructions say to put this angle arm with the lips facing towards each other inside. And that'll work if you get it just perfect. And if you get over a little bit, this is too far off. And I was, thought I was going to have to put a well nut in there that I showed you in the last video. But what I decided is I could take it loose, turn it around, and that would move it over about, it was here, and now it's over here about an inch and a half. You didn't mind right up. So I've got those well nuts if I need them, but I like this a lot better than more secure getting a hold of that uh, frame down there. But as we moved along, we got the first two panels in. And as I showed you in the uh, spreadsheet, we hooked them up in series. And we'll join up with the second panels three and four going back towards the rear. And we're going to hook them up in series. So as we had mentioned, each panel has got 210 watts. So two of them in series makes a string of uh, 420 watts. We have two strings of 420 watts, and then we join them together. We're going to join them together in parallel down in this combiner box down at, at the end. And so we've got one solar array going down the driver's side. It has 840 watts of solar. And that's going to be wired in back in the controller box at the back. And that's going to, uh, and that's going to keep our coach batteries charged up, 840 watts. That seemed like just about the right number. I knew I'd be over paneled just a little bit. So that way in the early morning and the evening and cloudy days, I'd be able to get a little bit more out of uh, my solar array than if I'd just stuck with 400 or 600 watts. That was the plan. It may or may not have been the best plan. And then we're gonna have another solar array on the passenger side that has two panels hooked together in series. And those are 210 watts a piece. And I'm going to use that solar array to go back in the controller box and uh, go, come down into a cabinet with MC4 connectors. And then I'm going to charge up my portable power stations. I've got 400 amp hours of uh, portable power stations that we carry with us. And then I've got 400 amp hours in the lead acid batteries back in the back, the coach batteries. But I can only use half of that. So I've got 200 amp hours of the coach batteries that I can use but I've got 400 amp hours of the uh, portable power stations. Now I can change this up later on real easy just by unplugging and plugging stuff in. It's real easy if I decide I need more power for the portable power stations and less for the coach, I'll be able to switch it up. So that's where we're at right now. We've got everything in, we've got it secured and sealed. The, all of the uh, die core is not put down yet. I wanna make sure everything's uh, just right before I totally seal it all in. So this here's the cabinet where we've got our solar controller coming in straight out of the roof and we've got a 50 amp circuit breaker that we can use as an on off switch to uh, take the power away from the solar controller if we need to. And it's a 100-50 solar controller meaning 
100 volts is the maximum that can come in and 50 amps is the maximum it'll send out to your batteries and then right out of the solar controller we've got the 60 amp circuit breaker another one and that will break the circuit going down further down and then you can see the two uh, cables coming down from our second solar array to charge up our portable power stations right here now I may end up taking them out our batteries are kind of weak and if we replace them where that they can hold more or more important if we go to uh, lithium batteries put 400 or 600 amp hours of lithium in here we will take these two wires and hook them to a second smaller solar controller and then put both outputs of both solar controllers into our battery bank but for now we'll use these for the portable power stations and then the uh, main solar controller will use it for the uh, coach batteries and then we'll go outside and let me show you how we get over to the coach battery so our combiner box is right up there it comes through the roof and then it comes into that little cabinet right up here this is our washer and dryer vent so we're right above it so it comes down through there and then this here is our electrical box it has our cutoff for our house batteries and our chassis and then here's the cutoff for the solar so it comes through right here so we've got this off and on and then goes out there right next door is our battery compartment so that's where it hooks up so it's a pretty straight little run and that just seemed like the best place to hook into that's right, we made it to Quartzsite. We gotta check out that solar and I can't think of a better place to do it. We brought our little kitchen here. We've got our grill and our smoker and our little uh, 12 volt refrigerator and we're good to go. We've been cooking out most of the time just to save the energy. We're not using the microwave and stuff like that, but it's working out great. We've been here two days. We haven't turned the generator on once. It's just perfect. We did, we were down to uh, 12.2 volts this morning when we got up and that's because last night we tried to use up a lot of extra power just for the heck of it we're just testing and pushing it uh, we do have a kind of a bad note our batteries tested uh, right on the lower end of good almost into the fair which I'm guessing that means they don't have too much time left to go so we're pushing them we're thinking we're going to use the portable power stations a lot and uh, we're getting just great solar out here. So I mentioned over paneling our system a little bit earlier. I'm not totally sure I understand this, but this is how I understand it and what we did. We have a uh, Victron 100-50 solar charge controller and it can handle up to 700 watts. But we put 840 watts of solar up on the roof and that's mainly because we don't think we'll ever be in an ideal situation where we'll totally get 840 watts with the sun right over the top of us. Here in Arizona, it's way out to the south. And then when we're up in uh, Montana and Wyoming and stuff, it's going to be even further to the south. So we'll never be getting it straight over us. But by having extra solar panels, what little bit is out there, we're going to get to get a bigger piece of that pie, I think. And this is kind of what we see in the early morning the sun's coming up in the east and you can see it's just above the horizon here this is eight o'clock in the morning and our solar panels are picking up 50 watts not a big deal you can see it a little right around eight o'clock and it's picking up around 50 watts so it's just kind of waking up but then by nine o'clock we're picking up 200 watts of solar now it's starting to do some good. We're, we're making bacon, as they say. And then by 9.30, we're up to 300 watts. So now we're, uh, we're actually recharging the batteries at a pretty good rate. And then by 10.30, we're there. We're picking up 500 watts. So then around one o'clock, which is just about the most solar we're probably gonna get, at least from our little bit of experience, we're picking up a whopping 680 watts of solar. It'll only handle 700, so we're right there. We've got all the panels that we can get to get as close to that 700 watts of solar. 
as the Arizona sunshine will give us. And we're shoving down 13 and a half volts at 44 amps. And our solar charger can only will only send down 50 amps. So it seems like we're pretty much maxing it out. We're sending down 13 and a half volts, 45 amps. So by over paneling, that lets us fill up that solar charger as just as full as we can. Now this may or may not be the right way to do it. We don't know. But from what we know now, it seems to be working pretty so good. So as you probably know from watching the video, this is not a how-to video. This is just how we did it. But I want to clarify one thing for sure. Our Victoron solar charge controller is rated for 700 watts of solar panel input. But down at the bottom on their spec sheet, it says real clear, if you put over 700 watts, it's just going to throw that off and it's not going to come in. It's not going to hurt the solar charger. It's just, uh, that's the most that it will deal with. So if you're thinking about doing over paneling before you buy all of your stuff, your solar panels and your solar charger, make sure that your solar charger will allow you to over panel it to supply more solar power than it can handle knowing that it'll never get to the total amount you've got on the roof and if it does it'll just shed it off and it'll just be wasted so i hope this helped describe how we put our system together we're probably going to make quite a few changes going forward as we learn more every time we talk to somebody new or read somebody new we realize either we did something wrong or we didn't do it as good as we could and we're going to be making changes and we'll keep you updated. But you know as much as we know about solar power now, be sure and get that book that we showed before, Will Prouse's uh, Do It Yourself RV Solar, whatever it's called. It helped us tremendously and we're going to go out. We've got uh, a subscriber coming down this afternoon to visit. So we're going to go out and visit with him, walk around here at Quartzside and check out See if we can find a good spot for our next exit boondocking rally. I will leave you with some uh, drone footage of the area. But until we see you guys again next time, keep the wheels rolling. Stay safe. We'll see you at the next exit, folks. Bye-bye.